Hey guys, NVAbe here with a strategy overview for our Team PvP Witch Doctor. This is the setup that we here at NV tend to use a lot, so it should be very helpful. That being said, go ahead and check out the Team NV Nation YouTube channel if you haven't already, and subscribe to that because that is where we do our clan matches. So definitely subscribe to that if you haven't already. Um, that being said, let's get started. All right, so first we're going to have a look at the gear. We want the Veiler's armor hat. Um, now I'm going to refer to the gear by their abilities. I don't like to name the actual piece of gear. Uh, but again, if you want to know where to get it, go ahead and consult the wiki. It's down below in a link. Um, it's the Pirate 101 Central Wiki. Um, look it up on there. So anyway, the hat is the Valor Fortress hat. Uh, I got that from Elka Boeing. Is Valor's armor. Um, that's all you really need to know. All right. For the robe, Robe of Houdini, got that from Farming Bishop. And for the boots, I like to have the Big Guns boots. Now, another option is to use the Tower boots, which gives Jobo's new brace and Mojo Storm. And I like Big Guns because Witch Doctors are really great early game. And if you get, like, three sets of Big Guns early in the game, then you can go for combos the next turn, and you pretty much almost always guarantee some type of kill on the second turn unless of course they use all their group heals um so great if you have um great to have the the big guns boots you can farm for them by farming the bishop now there are other places again consult the wiki all right so the weapon you want to use is going to be a six range weapon you can get this from either the old moon man shoes um wand the old moon man shoes not the one from the Tower of Mu Manchu, not the Staff of Power. Or else you can use Fool's Wand. Fool's Wand is way easier to farm, but it has less uh, damage on its wand attack. Again, Witch Doctors don't usually use their wand attack very much, so um, so Fool's Wand is usually good enough. I've never had any luck with farming the old Mu Manchu, so that's the reason why I have Fool's Wand. Um, it gives six range and your witch doctor has an extra range from the witch doctor trainer so they have seven range and if you include the um edge of the area attack um say if it's a mojo storm or something like that then that's actually eight range so you can pretty much outrange anything on the field except of course those abilities with infinite infinite range like um uh like morning song and um sniper shot so um very very OP weapon if you have it um, you definitely get it if you don't um, now the eye patch of recuperation is the ideal eye patch for witch doctors always good to have heals as witch doctors because they have a pile of will and a pile of mojo power so really great if you can get the eye patch of recuperation I got this farming sato you can also get black ring shades from farming sato which look really cool so that's what I recommend doing farm sato get those black ring shades and the eye patch of recuperation. Um, so anyway, that's the eye patch. And for the um, for the totem, you want the Valor's Fortress totem. Um, there are a couple of places we can get Valor's Fortress totem. Um, the main thing is that it gives Valor's Fortress. Again, consult the wiki. I got this one from the Fire Guardian. There's one that drops at Tyler as well. Um, so get this. If you can't get that, there's also a Valor's Armor one. So anyway. Um, that's the totem for you for the charm. You want the right hand amulet. And the important thing is that it gives Morn Song and Mojo Storm. You can get um, you can get the little 55 version of this or the level 60 version of this. Again, the only thing that matters is that it gives Morn Song and Mojo Storm. Um, so anyway, that's that's the totem for you. Um, if, if you absolutely can't get that, then you can also use the Veiler's Armor Totem as well. Uh, not Totem, Charm. Um, so for the ring, you want the Wrangler's Ring, which gives Veiler's Armor. And then you can um, also swap that out for the Tower Ring as well, if you want to be more offensive Witch Doctor. But the majority of the time, you want the Veiler's Armor Ring. Alrighty, so... That's the gear except for the pet. Now the pet, important thing is you want heals. Um, as I mentioned earlier with the eye patch, a lot of will and a lot of uh, mojo power 
It's great if it has scent or some other stuff like that. Mine has Soul Reaver as well. Um, it has scent and it kind of delays Witch Doctors for a bit. Um, it's also really, really nice if you have, um, if you have Rainbow Bless as well. And getting a Ruse in there wouldn't be bad. Um, so anyway, you want to morph some type of pet like this if you possibly can. Um, so anyway, that's the gear. I'm going to go ahead and show you the powers, um, like what you want to train. Uh, the main thing you want to train is going to be Fast 2. Um, now I also have Witch Hunter trained, um, just in case. And I have a an Elusive trained. So that's my setup for... Um, Pardon me, That's those are the powers that I trained. Now there are also some powers that I have trained that are actually in the deck. Um, the powers would be Baylor Shield, which you can get from the Privateer Trainer. And you got Raise Barricades, which you can get from the Musketeer Trainer. This is really useful for when you're up against uh, Musketeers in particular. Um, you put this in front of them and they can't bomb you right away. It makes them waste turns on their hearts and their buffs and other stuff like that. It's a really useful all-around ability. Um, I have Wind Spirit Train. This is for when I was with Privateers who didn't have any type of agility buff at all. Um, it was mostly for when I was doing 2v2s. So I don't know if this ability is really all that necessary, but um, I have it trained. So it seemed to be pretty useful to me. So up to you if you want to train that. You have Ruse right here. Always great to have another heal. Um, so that's pretty much all you train. Um, so I can really quickly go over the deck setup now that I'm here. You got your big guns and you got your gunnery up front. You got the Widow's Touch, your three early game abilities, your Baylor Shield, you got your Will Buff, you got your Moon Song, you got your Emergency Baylor's, Baylor's Armor and Group Heal. Now I got this Group Heal from my pet, um, so, you know, um, not everybody has the group heal on their pet, so if you don't have that, go ahead and swap in that rally. You got your Octopores, you got your Morn Song, you got your Soul Reaver, and you got your rally. And then you're getting into your Veiler's Army or Protection, and an early game Storm as well. Um, you got your Raven's Cry. Now, I have my Purge on number 17. It's been working out pretty well because a lot of these abilities up front go pretty quickly because Witch Doctor tends to use them all early game. Um, but every once in a while I swap it back to say number 8 or number 6. Right now I have it on number 70. And that's also another thing. Witch Doctors, they tend to go last in line. So their purge isn't used as much as other classes. Um, so that's the reason why I have it right here for now. So when you get good at that, then you don't have to take as many precautions when you're playing the last class in the lineup. Um, but anyway, um, you got your revive, you got your barricade. Definitely want your barricade on at least 20. Um, very important ability. Um, you can copy down the rest of this deck if you want. The last, say, half a page right here, and the last page right here doesn't matter as much. All the same. You want your more useful abilities up front when it comes to these. So um, copy down this bet this deck the best you can, or something similar to it. Um, that's pretty much the power setup for Witch Doctors. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you what companions uh, we like to use. All right, so Bonnie in here. Um, that's a good one. Five range. We like to use a lot of five range companions in. Um, in team pvp the longer the range the better in most cases you got pepe as well and you got nausicaa um, a couple of good options are also um, exeter and lefty so i'm going to go ahead and go over the setups for each of these uh, for bonnie ann you got um, now you want to train double tap to uh, return fire Burst Fire 2 and Overwatch 3. And the reason why you don't want Double Tap 3 is because it swaps out the um, ratio of accuracy to dodge for the base stat, which is agility in Musketeer's case. And since you're usually up against other Musketeers, 
your accuracy is way better than your um, than your agility ratio. So train double tap two instead and train a return fire. That's my advice. I haven't reset in a long time and it's no big deal if you happen to have double tap three. So um, just a small thing. Um, you want a max agility, you want max tough, you want max accurate, you want max rough, and you want a little bit of dodge to to finish it off. So Bunyan also has a scatter blast, which is five by nine, um, and a second wind. She also has a good old uh, solid attack. Um, this is good for when you don't want to trigger any um, any musketeer reaction hits. Safe Nazca has that little extra health. Alright, so you also have Pepe right here. Um, Pepe, you want to set him with Overwatch 3, Double Tap 2, Quick Draw 2. You want Agility 4, you want Rough 4, Tough 4, Accurate 4, and finish up with just a little bit of dodge. And he has these bombs which have 6 range, 7 if you include the edge of the area attack. Um, and of course, people step on them, so um, they're really good as well. And a Super Attack which does roughly 1000 damage something like that plus it's double tap and all that good stuff so um that's pepe for you uh, also he has like a lot of armor so he's really tough um and here's nausicaa most of the time you only have um one witch doctor in your lineup and they usually go last so they're usually the one with nausicaa um now if there are two witchies you usually don't want to use two nausicaas so there are a couple other companions that i'll be showing you in a second so this is how you want Nazca set. You want double tap one, troop it two, um, burst fire two, and quick adjust that she automatically comes with. Um, you want to set her with agility four, tough four, rough four, accurate four. And since my Nazca's level 73, I have two extra uh, talents, so I gave her dodgy two. Um, I gave her point blank shot. I didn't give her those. Um, those are just abilities she comes with. Um, she's got a super point blank, a mega point blank, an epic point blank, and she has her Nausicaa charge, which gives her double movement. Um, she has seven movements, so that's um, that's 14 movement right there. It's really OP because she can pretty much hit anywhere on the board if she's not slowed. Um, and she hasn't used this ability. So. In fact, in some 2v2 tournaments I've been in, they've actually banned this ability right here. So um, that's how overpowered this ability right here can be. Um, she has four range. Um, since I kind of forgot to mention how much range these guys have as far as their movement goes, uh, well, these guys have five range. Like they're like they have five range, but their movement is four and a half. Um, I'll be showing you what a half movement is if you aren't exactly sure what I'm talking about because they don't exactly have half squares in this game. Um, Alright, so Exeter's another really good option. Um, we've had matches where they've banned Nausicaa completely, which makes not a whole lot of sense at all because Nausicaa's not that, that hard to counter. Um, but here's, here's Exeter for you. He has those group slows right here. This one... Um, really really useful about mid game and this one is mostly useful for the beginning of the game this one right here hardly gets used very effectively but um so good to have they slow in a group you got a 50 percent one right here which slows for three turns this one is a 33 percent slows for five turns um right here you got musketeer's metal this is really great for if the other team tanks a unit and sends a charging your musket line you can pop this on them and they won't be able to do as much damage, so it's really great for that. And you got a super strike, does quite a bit of damage. Um, here's how you want him set Overwatch 3, True Grit 3. And you want to give him all the usual Musketeer talents Agility 4, Acker 4, Damage 4, Tough 4, and a little bit of dodge to finish it off. So that is M for you. He also has 4.5 movement range, and he has 4. Um, he has four musket range, so like he can he can hit from four. Um, here is Lefty for you. Gets an epic strike. Um, now I'm a little bit confused exactly how you want him set. Um, so I I never really use this guy at all. 
Um, but uh, I've heard that he's really good, and some some of the other witch doctors have used him. You definitely want Burst Fire 2 and Double Tap 2. I give mine Overwatch 2. Um, so you want to give him all the usual Musketeer talents right here. Again, um, I don't use him a whole lot. He's kind of a last resort for in case you don't have Exeter and you don't have Nausicaa or aren't allowed to use Nausicaa. So um, those are the companions that we here like to use. So um, I'm going to really quickly step on the battle board and demonstrate some of this stuff. Uh, here we go. Got the good old Killer Clown outfit on. Haven't changed that in a while. Um, just haven't gotten around to getting crowns to restitch. I kind of like it, so I'm taking my time with restitching. So, got a whole four pirates with the Killer Clown stitch. So, I like quad screening and trio screening with those. Alright, here we go demonstration for you. Bam. Alrighty. I take a second to load. Alright, there we go. I move up in a musket line. Ah, oh boy. Alright, this is where I'll explain what a half movement is. Alright, so your witch doctor has six movement range. You can see they can go six movement total. And if you notice that they if they take a diagonal, like they do right here, that they have less movement, um, that's where half movements come in place. Alright, so you have Nazca. She also has she has seven movements. So she has one more than your pirate. Um, as you can see, also less movement when you move on the diagonal. Now, um, these companions right here, they have four and a half movement. Um, so, I'm going to really quickly show you that. So, they can move right here, four and a half. Now, if they move diagonally and they go this way right here, they can also move that way. And I have to pass and show you the rest of this on the next turn. Alright, so if you go on a diagonal, that's one and a half movements. So you can move on diagonal like this, and uh, you can move diagonally like that. Um, I see Nausicaa, if she moves in on a diagonal, she can move one less. Okay? Now, if she had seven and a half movement, she'd be able to move here because she would have a half movement left. So she'd be able to move this diagonal and it would cost one and a half and she'd have an extra movement and land right here. But she can't. So she has seven one she has she has seven movement, not seven and a half. So that's what I mean by four and a half when I say these companions have four and a half movement. So hopefully that was um, somewhat clear. Um, going to demonstrate their range as well. If you if you still are a little bit confused, then um, I'm just going to you know do the best I can to answer y'all's um, comments in the description below this video. Um, so yeah, going to demonstrate their range real quick. Oh, yeah, I moved Pepe a little bit too far forward. All right. Going to use all the, their abilities and let you see exactly what they do. Bam. That's a scatter blast. Bombs can hit all the way back there. They leave some bombs for people to step on as well. That's Nausicaa for you. She can charge all the way across to the furthest corner of the field if she's not reduced. There you go. Nausicaa's OP. 
Alrighty, so those are pretty much the companions that you use, um, pretty much the entire setup. Um, hopefully next week I'll be doing, I guess, either a swashbuckler or a buccaneer setup, depending. Um, anyway, I'm going to finish the series <laughs> sometime soon. But um, that's the uh, Witch Doctor set for Team PvP. Hopefully it was helpful. And again, subscribe to Team Envy Nation on YouTube if you have not already. That being said, um, it's pretty much the end of this video. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. And also subscribe to my channel as well. That is it for this video, and peace out for now.